What is up, fellow nerds, and welcome back to the Dapper Snapper Gaming Channel, and welcome back to How Do I Want to Do This? This is our series where we take a look at all playable options available to players in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, then we rank them on a scale of 1 to 10 and either build them or fix them depending on how they rank. Now, today we are beginning our talks on the Oath of Glory Paladin, the paladin that strives to be the best athlete that he or she can be and to achieve glory and accolades and basically you're a gladiator right at least at least you could be um or at least something similar which is a really really cool thing to uh to play as in DD. however we need to find out if it is any good and that's what we seek to do today but before we do make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already as you can see most people who watch the channel are not subscribed so please don't be one of those people Help us to reach our goal of 5,000 by the end of this year. I think we can do it, but I need your help in order to get there. And of course, it will always help if you will click that bell so you're notified when new videos are uploaded and share the video with your friends. One short note before we jump into today's episode, I just wanted to let you know that if you are looking forward to week three's battle of my uh, run through the SSBA Pokemon Draft League, there will not be an upload this week. Uh, the week three has been extended due to some scheduling issues with some of the other players. And so this week is kind of getting extended. So my week three battle will be one week later than what it would normally be. So. When you don't see that upload go up, don't think that I've quit the league or anything's anything stopped. There just will not be an upload for that this week. It will resume next week. So with that out of the way, let's jump back in. So the Oath of Glory Paladin is really, really unique. Number one, it comes from the Mythic Odyssey of Theros book, um, and then it was, of course, reprinted later. But any of your Theros type of, of things, I think are just super interesting, right? Because they are very limited in what came out of that book, but it's just such a cool flavor. And it, it, it's, just, it's just really interesting that what they were kind of going through during that phase. And I really do like what what this kind of uh, seeks to, to emulate, right? You, the gladiator is kind of the main thing that I think of, but it's really any really really serious athlete uh can can really fit into this type of a uh, type of thing and then how you become an adventurer that can be a really cool story to tell but is it any good let's find out Starting off, as always, we have our expanded spell list for this subclass, and we actually have a few decent options here. Number one, Guiding Bolt. This is a fantastic spell, a ranged spell that does decent damage, but what's more important is the next attack roll against it has advantage. That's huge for setting up your rogue, for setting up somebody who needs to land some kind of a big hit, maybe somebody that has an expanded crit range, anything like that, someone is going to really, really enjoy having that. Enhance ability is also quite good. Um, it's one that's kind of overlooked a lot of times, but I think it's a pretty good spell. And then there's the elephant in the room, haste. A paladin with haste is kind of insane because that means that you can smite more during a turn. Now, obviously that's more of your spell slots that are going, but haste is always going to be an amazing spell um, outside of, of course, you know, whenever you end it, you have your, uh, your cooldown time. But ultimately that is huge for a paladin to be able to just go ahead and do to themselves rather than having to rely on somebody else doing it to you instead. Um, and then of course we also have things like freedom of movement, which is pretty great and flame strike. So overall it's a pretty decent list. There are some on here that are just kind of meh, but for the most part it's decent. So I've got to give this a seven out of 10 overall. I, I think it's mostly pretty good. Um, there are a couple, a couple duds here and there, a couple things that overlap that I'm not not so much interested in, but overall it's pretty good. Also at level three, we get channel divinity. And of course we get two unique options to us with this subclass. The first is peerless athlete. And so when we activate this as a bonus action for the next 10 minutes, we can get advantage on athletics checks and acrobatics checks. We can also double the weight that we can carry, push, drag, or lift. And we are going to extend our long and high jump distances by 10 feet. We also get Inspiring Smite, and so immediately after we deal damage to a creature with our Divine Smite, we can use this as a bonus action and give temporary hit points to any creatures within 30 feet of us. That also does include ourselves, which is pretty good, and the number of temporary hit points equals 2d8 plus our Paladin level. This is 
pretty interesting what we get as these two options. Um, let's start with Peerless Athlete. I don't think you're going to be using this one all that much, right? I, I like the flavor. It definitely fits with, with the theming here, but I don't know how much you're going to really care to double the weight that you can push, pull, drag, and lift, especially when there are races out there like the Loxodon, like the uh, GIF, like the Goliath that already have powerful build that can do this already, right? Um, so that's a thing. Um, you know, getting advantage on athletics and acrobatics checks, that's kind of niche to me. I, I don't think that it's enough for me to use something as valuable as my channel divinity. Um, and, and extending our long and high jump, I'm definitely not worrying about it for that. So I don't see us using that all that much. Now, Inspiring Smite is not the worst. Um, it's not the best, but it's basically a slightly better version of Second Wind. At least that, that's kind of how I see it. It's a bonus action and you give temporary HP. You could do it all to yourself or you can split it up. Obviously, the most you're ever going to get out of this is 36 and that's at level 20 in Paladin. So that's not that much. Um, and so I, I think that it'll be really good at low level and it will very quickly become outclassed as you get higher and higher level. Luckily, you do have Harness Divine Power to fall back on, but we're looking at these two for today. So ultimately, I think they are just a little bit disappointing. Um, In Inspiring Smite is okay at low level, but it will fizzle out because it doesn't scale all that well. Um, so overall, I'm gonna give these a five out of 10. I don't see Peerless Athlete coming up all that much. Maybe you'll use it and, and it'll be great in this niche situation where you really need to make an athletics or acrobatics check. Um, but otherwise, I don't see it being used. And Inspiring Smite, could be nice since it could save your life once or twice. It just depends on how the math works. But overall, I just don't think it's enough for me to to really rely on something like this. At level seven, we get Aura of Alacrity. And of course, this is our signature aura to this subclass. But this one functions a bit differently than any of the other auras of any of the other subclasses. So for this one, we are actually going to extend the distance that we can walk. This extends walking speed for both us and creatures around us by 10 feet. However, there's a bit of an issue with this because it only has a five foot radius rather than a 10 foot radius. And then when you get to level 18, it extends to 10 feet rather than 30. So this definitely is, is a weird nerf um, to make it where it's not the 10 and 30. Um, I really don't see why they did this. Um, for it to be something that is based on positioning like this, just extending speed by 10 feet is not going to be game breaking, at least not in my opinion. Is it good? Yeah, it's pretty good, but it's it's nothing that's going to be broken by any means. So I'm really confused as to why they did this, as to why they nerfed it for, for some reason. Um, but it kind of is what it is. So ultimately, it's not going to get that great of a ranking because it, it's its range is so small. They have to be standing right next to you when they take off which could be interesting when it comes to when it comes to you know positioning and, and trying to come up with plans and things but ultimately I, I just think it's nerfed for no reason so i've got to give this another five out of ten it, it's just kind of artificially nerfed for no reason um if it was something that was really broken then maybe i could understand this but otherwise i don't understand why you had to restrict this aura so much at level 15, we get Glorious Defense, and this basically gives us a limited type of shield spell, sort of, to a ally that is nearby, which can be very, very helpful. So when a creature that is within 10 feet of us is hit by an attack roll, we can use our reaction to add our Charisma modifier to the AC of that creature for that attack. If the attack then misses, we can then make one weapon attack against that attacker as part of that same reaction. Of course, as long as the attacker is within our weapon's range. And this is limited to charisma modifier times per day rather than once per day. So we are at least a little bit less limited as far as that goes. Um, this feature is okay, right? The, the issue comes with getting the full uh, the, the full brunt of, of this, the full benefit of this is going to be somewhat difficult 
um, but it definitely can happen. So we are going to be targeting, trying to be near our allies and right next to or within 10 feet if we're using a polearm of our, of our enemies. And so that can be a little bit difficult sometimes, um, but it definitely can happen. This does give us an extra attack that we could make on, on the opponent's turn, which means that's another chance for us to smite, which means we could also pour temporary HP onto that ally if, if the ally is starting to get low from, from being hit by something else. And this feature is spammable, right? Because we use it once and it doesn't work. They try again the next turn. Once you've gotten your reaction back, you can do it again. Um, so, you know, it's not a once per day type of feature. So that's pretty good. Um, and, and, I, and I think that's appropriate because I really don't think that this is a busted feature by any means. Um, I, I think when it works, it's going to be pretty good. But getting it to work might be a little more difficult than it sounds. Overall, I'm going to give this a 7 out of 10. I don't think it's bad by any means, and I don't think that meeting the criteria here are anywhere near impossible because they're they're not. Um, but it might be a little difficult to make this happen as, as much as what it makes it sound. Finally, at level 20, we get Living Legend, and this is, of course, our insane powerful ability that all Paladins get at level 20, and we're just going to have to see... How powerful it actually is so of course we activate this as a bonus action and for one minute we get a few things and so for this one we get advantage on all charisma checks we can uh, once on each of our turns whenever we make a weapon attack and we miss we can cause it to hit instead automatically which is kind of huge and when we fail a saving throw we can use our reaction to re-roll it and we have to use that new roll instead and one thing that's really interesting about this one is that it is once per day or we can expend a fifth level spell slot and do this again. So this is very unique in how in how this one works. It's definitely slightly different from, from pretty much any of the other ones. Um, giving us advantage on charisma checks can definitely be helpful, um, but I don't know if I wanna blow my 20th level feature just to be able to talk to somebody. Um, unless it's some kind of like game ending type of situation, which you're level 20. So that's, that's pretty possible. So, you know, if you need to roll that, you know, 35 on your persuasion check, th this, this could be the time, right? This, this might be the time to blow something like this, especially since you can do it more than once. Um, that, that could be interesting, right? And that definitely could make or break a situation. So I could see it coming up in at a level 20 situation. You're going to be the, the face of the party most likely. So you're going to be the one doing the talking. You need good charisma checks. So I, I can see it. I, I see the appeal. Um, of course, being able to auto hit one attack per turn is pretty great. Of course, you're going to be dealing with angels, demons, all kinds of craziness at this level. You want to hit all of your attacks and get your smites in so that you can soften those up for whatever it is that the rest of your party has. And I mean, that's a free smite right there, right? That, that's all I see when I when I see that, uh, which is pretty great. And then of course, if we fail a saving throw, we basically get Indomitable from the fighter class, allowing us to reroll it, which can be pretty good. Although it, we're gonna be kind of hard pressed to fail a lot of our saving throws, unless they target something that we're really bad at, like an intelligence saving throw. Um, but of course those are pretty, pretty rare and actually they're very rare um, so we're not going to be failing a ton of them just because of our aura of protection but if we ever do this could be a, a bit of a backup so overall the, these aren't bad things what's pretty cool though is that we can use a spell slot to get this back and honestly with everything that's built in I don't know that it's worth it, but if it's not, it's pretty close, actually. I, I think it's pretty good. Just being able to auto hit once per turn is really valuable. And obviously saving throws on spells and things are incredibly crucial when you're at level 20, because I mean, that is that is insta-death. That could be a, a finger of death. That could be a power word kill. That could be any, any kind of any insta-kill kind of thing. Uh, that could definitely be a thing, right? And so I, I think that that could, could definitely come up and definitely help you to survive 
a lot longer than what you think. So I, I think this is actually better than what, what it comes across on paper. Um, overall, I'm gonna give this a nine out of 10. I, I think Living Legend is pretty good because it does give you a lot of flexibilities where you really needed them before. And being able to use a spell slot while it is fifth level, being able to get that back is still pretty valuable if you want to. So I think for all of those reasons, I, I think it's pretty good. So what do we think of the Oath of Glory Paladin? Uh, this is an interesting Paladin for sure. Um, when I first read this Paladin, I definitely, uh, I, I definitely thought it was more exciting than it actually is. But the more that I read it, the more that I just kind of felt like it's, it's just kind of boring as a paladin right which which is kind of weird to think because I, I really like the paladin class i think most people do but ultimately i think this one just kind of falls flat in a lot of ways because it just feels like a fighter or a barbarian that is just kind of pretending in the paladin kit i i, I don't know it, it's just kind of a weird vibe as a paladin um, I'm not saying that it's unplayable. I'm not saying that it's bad necessarily because I don't I don't think that this is a bad subclass. Um, and I, I don't even necessarily think that it needs to be fixed. I, I just, I don't know. It's just not exciting. So as far as my ranking goes, I'm gonna give this a seven out of 10, which is a passing grade, which means we're going to be building one later this week. But if it were up to me, I would change some things to give this a little bit of, of a better identity and just to make it a little more exciting to play overall. Um, but I mean, mechanically and functionally, it's playable and it's not complete trash, um, but it's definitely better once you get to later levels in my opinion. But the first few levels can be a little rough outside of the expanded spell list. So that is all for today's video. Of course, let me know in the comments what you thought of my ranking. Was I too high? Was I too low? Let me know. I would love to discuss that down below with you. We're going to be building one of these later this week, and I am excited to come up with that. I've got a really interesting idea for uh, for this build. No, no hex blade dips, no any of that other stuff like what we what we did last week. So don't worry about that. Definitely something a little bit different, and I'm looking forward to that. So I hope you guys will stick around. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that, and you've got the bell clicked so you don't miss when it goes live. And until then, stay safe out there. Stay healthy. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.